Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for making your time to share your story. Happy National Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, so what's the speciality of this month and how you guys are celebrating? Well, what's special about this is that it's a way for, um, for us to acknowledge and celebrate all the contributions the Latino community or Latino people have made in our society. Yes, and uh, you are an entrepreneur since four decades. What's, what's the wonderful story you have, really? And how do you like to recall those days that you started your life as an entrepreneur? I started at a very young age. I started working at the age of 11. My father opened up a business. And uh, we've been there for 43 years already. It's Las America's Meat Market. And we had our hardships. We've gone through many things. But we had very good experiences there. And among one of the things is being able to be with the community, share things with the community, be able to service yeah. the community. Yes. So it, it was meat market in the beginning or you started somewhere else no it started the meat market in 1978 and so it remains it a butcher shop a meat market with specialty yeah. products yeah so how you would like to share your experiences with the community that you know contributing four decades or sorry handling the business since a four decade it's something special you still have maybe wonderful experience on the journey I've been in there so many years that I've, our customers have had children. Their children have had children. So I have three <laughs> generations of customers. You have uh, customers since uh, three generations. It's a uh, one, generation? wonderful thing, you know, you have three generations. Yes. How so do I've you feel, you know, getting, getting grandfather in the store and uh, sometimes getting grandchildren in the store? Yes. Is the same meat market that you are during these 40 years or 44 years? No, it's 43 years. It's the same meat market. My father opened in 1978. He yeah. retired about 10 years later. And my brothers and myself, we remain in the store and we've been there since then. My father built it. We work at it. And now my daughter works in there too. So that's my nephew. So now it's also three generations. You are also in the three generation and maybe you have, uh, you know, enhances your business as well or just limited into the one store that you started with my brother i have that store i opened another store another butcher shop with my partner five years ago it's somewhere else in richmond hill richmond hill area of course yes and uh, what what kind of meat you guys are selling there well we sell prime meat we don't sell choice and select because meats have um um grades we sell mm -hmm. only prime meat uh we sell beef poultry and uh, pork some mm -hmm. goat and some lamb what inspired you to start a business in sort of age like you were at that time? Then I was very young. What inspired me to do another business five years ago, I just, I don't know, to start something my daughters can see, set an example, my daughters can see that a woman is capable of also opening up a business and having it be successful. Yes, of course, and maybe uh, your daughter will be really proud of you because whatever you have been doing, it's uh, something a great example you set in the society. Yes, I, I think my daughters have followed the example and they're very wise business wise. Business wise, they're very wise. How difficult it was to start a business like 1978, you say? I think it was difficult for my father first because he the lack of language. He didn't know mm. English very much. Yeah. Um, also, Latinos, there weren't that many. Mm -hmm. They were just beginning to come into the States. Yeah. Um, I guess the trust of the landlord, will this person take my store and will he pay me the rent? Oh, and wow. uh, yeah, I guess building the credit. You building know, I think credit. for an immigrant, it was a little bit much more difficult. People are doing some wonderful job from different parts of the world. They came to the United States, especially in the Queens or New York. It's, a, it's you know, we like to say the borough of diversity, city of diversity, state of diversity. And uh, that's the reason we are celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month. How yes. are you involving with this uh, celebration? I'm not involved so much as generally just this month. I think we celebrate in a way every single day. I, I believe that um, by going, let's say, to a Mexican restaurant, I'm acknowledging that the Mexican food is very good. By going into an Ecuadorian place, I'm what I'm acknowledging is that whatever the product they have or whatever they you know, they selling it's very good so one way or another i think we, i'm celebrating all the time but it is important that we celebrate at least acknowledge it for this month so yeah. other people can become aware of it and their children 
can say, wow, this person did such and such a thing. Then when I grow up, even though I look Hispanic, I might be also successful. So Luz, do you have any connection with the other community as well, despite uh, Hispanic community? Because you are in the surrounding Richmond Hill area, there are a lot of Indian community, Bengali community, Nepali community as well, and people from you know South Asia, different part of the countries. So, what is your connection with the, with other well, communities? We have a large Nepal um, clientele. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, it started a few years ago. I'm in Woodside, and there are a lot of uh, people from Nepal in Woodside. Uh, they come to our meat market, they like our meat, they come and they buy kima to make uh, the momos, they buy yuma. So little by little, we've learned to exchange you know, words, ideas, and, and, you know, we try to cater to them as much as possible. How did you end up in this country? Like uh, your parents or you? Well, my father came to the United States back in 1968, looking oh. for a better life. Yeah. Uh, my mother pursued after in 1970, 71. We came also in 1971, 72. And mm. been here since then. Love the United yeah. States. I'm originally from Colombia. Colombia, very nice. I was, I was nice. born in yeah. Colombia. Yeah, beautiful country, I remember. And I know the soccer player, James Rodriguez. Maybe yeah. he, he's, he's the national team, team captain as well. Yes, yes. When I saw his game yesterday, he scored again. I haven't seen him lately, but I know he's a very good play and soccer player. He's a fantastic player. He's okay. A fantastic. Yes, <laughs> and uh, glad to know that I have a couple of friends from Colombia, like, um, uh, you know, the state senator and uh, some people in the politics, some people are in community organizer, or some people yes. are in different profession, but they are helping each other. And uh, the area where we are living and growing up our kids, Yes. A huge yes. number of Colombian people are here and they are really great and very nice and very good to go. That's very nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The nice about being in this country is that, that we're all able to live together from together. different parts of the world and experience their culture. They are, they, everything yes, that they do, all this, learn from it. I believe this is, the, this is the beauty of the United States of America. It is. Right? It is. So yes. how you like to recall your, your childhood? How was it? Well, we did the basic elementary, middle, and, and high school. I went to college. I went for um, engineering, mm -hmm. but uh, semester short of graduating, stayed in the meat, uh, got married, and then went back to work in the meat market. Yes, and uh, your parents started the meat market, and you joined it, right? It, my parents started when I was 11. Oh, yes, at that time, yes, yes. okay. I've been there as a cashier since then. So you started working first? Yes. Then later you you take over that business. Yes. Back in 1987, my father decided to retire, and my oldest brother Ricardo came over. He was in the Air Force, and he decided, well, we got to take over the business. You know, okay. mom is still around, and we got so, to support ourselves. We were so pretty we young, I think 21, 22, when we took over. So we can say that this is something like a family business. It is. Yes, it's a family yeah. business. Mm -hmm. So you are here in the New York City since you born, right? Since I was five years old, six years you, old. Oh, since you were six years old. How yes. do you yes. accept this New York City and the diversity? And what is the best thing that you are here in New York City, you feel? I, I, I came at a very young age, so I was able to integrate at a very young age with Americans, people from different parts of the world. And what do I think about New York? I think it's one of the greatest states. In, or, the United States is one of the best places to be. Uh, we find diversity. We find all different kind of ethnic groups. Um, to, in New York City, we all get along. Um, it's just it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to be with everyone from everywhere in the world. Uh, as an Oman entrepreneur, what are the challenges you faced during this time? Uh, you know, running your business. Well, challenges we face all the time. Well, I think all businesses do. As soon as the pandemic started, it was very thick. We remained open. We, we, were, we, we were essential workers, so we, we stayed open. It was important for us to keep the meat market open so people can come and buy food because everyone was scared that there was not going to be any food tomorrow. But the challenges we had was that there was hardly any meat. So my brother had to go through a lot of struggles and my nephew trying to find meat so we can provide to our customers. What do you like to say to other women if they want to start their business? What is your message to them? I, I think go for it. 
I mean, the United States and New York gives a lot of opportunities to everyone. How hard is it to start a business? It's a very, very difficult as well, right? Well, it, it is difficult. I mean, you need, you need money, you need to have the knowledge, you need to get the licenses, you know where to go, and you have to find the location. What's most important is the location. Of course, location, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just said the investment as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, every time you open a business, you always hope for it to be successful. So do your homework. Make yeah. sure that you know the product that you're going to sell, that you you know how to do it, that the location is important, that you mm -hmm. have enough funds for it. Yeah, so if I specifically ask you about some tips that you want to share to the people who are, with, who are in confusion, what are your best tips to start the business? My best tips? Dedication. Dedication, hard work, um, knowledge, and uh, family support is very important. And uh, do your due diligence. Do your, I don't know, just shop around, look around. Don't jump into the first thing. Think mm -hmm. and say, is it, good? is it good enough? Is it worth it? And always remember that once you open a business, it's like seven days a week, seven days, 24 hours. Because once you close the store, you still have to go home. You got to do accounting. You have to think, what do I, you know, I need to purchase things tomorrow. It just doesn't stop there. Yeah. So there is 24 seven you need to be there. Yes. Right. You have a business, you have a family, you are involving in the community as well. How do you balance those things? Well, you try to balance it as best as you can, but you do make sacrifices. I mean, you mm. when now it's much easier for me because I've been in business for many years, so I work less hours. But yeah. at the beginning, I worked many hours. I worked from 8 in the morning to 7 in the evening. You have to come home. You have to make dinner. You have to take care of the kids. It's a lot of work. But wow. eventually, gradually just got better and the kids got older. What is your future plan in this business? Like you want to grow more or what is it? Well, I want to not do more. I just want it to be like great, like always good. I want to give the best service to the customers. I want customers to, when they come in, they're happy, they're smiling. And when they leave, they're happy, they're smiling. No matter how much money they spend, I want mm -hmm. them to feel satisfied with the products they're taking home. Was there a really hard time for you when you think that about to quit as well, the business? Well, I'm hoping to retire, but I hope to retri retire gradually. In other words, still be able to come to work two or three days a week and spend other yeah. days doing other activities. And eventually, I would have to let go because the next generation has to take over. And so far, my nephew is there managing the meat market and yeah. my daughter is working with us as well. And she might just stay. Yes, from Colombia to the New York City and uh, owning a business, you have really wonderful story in your life. Maybe you are one of the proudest women in, in, in this country. Right thank and you. happiest as well, man. So far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you think that you are one of the happiest one? If I'm happy, yes. Yeah. I I am very happy. I am very happy. Um, I'm healthy. Um, what I live what makes you really sad and uh, upset? Sad, where I see prejudice. Prejudice. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I see people are not humble, we're all the same. Yeah. You know? well, um, but no, not too many things make me happy. I try not to listen to the news. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's up to you. It's okay. So, yeah. so and um, what you would like to uh, say regarding the Hispanic National Hispanic Heritage Month at the end? Because we are almost at the end of the interview. Well, it's just I'm happy that they do it once a year. I, I yeah. hope they make it bigger they advertise it in school so children can understand about yeah. it can know get more knowledge about it um it's important to recognize the people that have given contribution to the united states the latinos that have contributed and it's it'd be a great role model yes Lud, uh let us know that uh, what are your festival culture can you give some insight about your culture well colombians are very happy people they like to celebrate. They like to drink. They like to eat good food. Um, they love to dance. That's one thing. I don't know if you ever gone to Flushing Meadow Park. 
If you go to the Latino side, you can see, you can hear loud music or blasting. Oh, music is amazing here. Right now. A, yes, they're very much into music. Very happy people. Colombians mm -hmm. are very happy people. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you very much for joining us.